Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning all about how to build with stone. It opens up a whole variety of different options for your buildings. And we're going to focus on kind of castle-like stone features. In general, I find that a lot of these online videos go way too crazy and show you way too advanced stuff. And most of you watching this, you're not going to do that, you know? So I want to try and make guides that's more approachable and easier to use for all Valheim players. And really encourage more people to build, because building is a really fun part of Valheim. Without further ado, let's get into it. But first, how do you unlock stone? As soon as you are able to get your hands on two iron and the certling cores necessary to smelt those two iron into two iron bars. And that is actually quite doable. I'll show you a little trick here. Normally, you'd have to get iron by killing the elder, the second boss, and then unlocking one of these crypts. However, if you're lucky, you'll find these elite blobs or oozers. And these guys, when you kill them, have a high chance of dropping an iron ore. Just killing through four of these will usually give you all the iron ore you need to at least build a stone cutter and get started building stone pieces. You really only need that two iron to make the stone cutter, and then you can build a really big castle. You don't need any more iron. Whether you do it the original way and kill the second boss, get the key, and then loot a crypt and do all the progression, or you just do it the quick way and kill a couple oozers with some arrows, you're gonna end up being able to make a stone cutter and then boom, enter the castle age. You can now make structures that are pretty resistant to most things. And you also get to build in a whole new different way because stone has different rules and different pieces. They're different shapes, they're thicker than all the wood pieces. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a whole bunch of different features using stone. There's a few things about building with stone that make it different than with wood. First off, all pieces have to sort of touch the ground or another chunk of stone. If I try and put this piece here, we'll find that it just snaps and disappears. This is because you have to have a piece of stone underneath. Stone can't just float in the air, it has to have stone or earth under it. So now I can place the piece and it's fine. So this is really important, it's the main thing to understand when you're working with stone. Repairing your stone walls is really easy once they do get damaged, although you won't have to repair them that often because they don't get damaged by the rain and they have way more health than wooden structures. Another awesome feature is that if you use the hoe while near a stone cutter, you'll be able to use some stone to make a paved road. And this will change the texture and it'll also sort of even out the terrain. It levels it a bit, just like the cultivator does. This allows you to put this cool stone texture, which can make a great floor, and it's a lot cheaper to use than making stone tiles, which you will see later in this video. Most of the time, when people build with stone in Valheim, the average player, they're going to use this 4x2 stone wall. And the reason for this is because this piece is pretty big, and it only costs 6 stone. Compare that to this piece, which I like to use, this is four stone, so to make the same wool, right? So this wool here costs 16 stone, whereas this one only costs six. You can see why it's much more common to have, it's much more common for people to build with this. They're trying to save their resources. That being said, building with bricks is what I consider to be the most fun way to build with stone. Just because stuff looks really cool and you don't have to be good at building stuff to make things look cool. You just have to learn a few basic patterns which you're gonna learn from this video and then you can make cool castle-like structures that are pretty defensive from the first tiers of enemies in the game. Building with bricks may take more resources but it's a lot more fun because there's so much more variety to the different kinds of things that you can do. One thing I recommend doing is getting in the habit of laying the bricks in an alternating pattern, like this. I find that the easiest way to make these patterns is actually to start one side and then go all the way up. Here's what I mean. We're gonna place the first part of this wall down here. And then I'm gonna place the smaller brick. And then I'm gonna just keep placing on top of it. Once you've made the edge of the wall as tall as it needs to be, and you've kept the pattern intact, 
Then it's really simple. You just keep going up, just like this. And sometimes you can't reach that top part, so you might need some stairs. But as long as you go from the bottom, right, down here to the top, then you'll find that the wall sort of holds itself together. See? It crushes here, but then holds itself up there. When you're building, it works much better to go from bottom to top. That way, the stone always has support, and you can just keep building up. Another advantage of these patterns is that the wool holds together well once it's damaged. Whereas using this pattern sort of distributes the weight of the stone wool so that it can get holes in it and won't crumble. Another great stone build piece is the stone stairs. Stone stairs are a special stone item because they can actually go into the side of things. As you can see here, if I start the stone case there, it's in the ground, so of course it's fine. But then we can actually keep the stone case... We can actually keep the staircase going, as you can see here. We can keep building it up into this wall. And the arch, these pieces can come out from other stone pieces, as you can see here, which makes them quite useful. By making two of these walls together, you can make a pretty cool little hallway that can be useful for taming wolves or other dangerous creatures and also giving some separation, allowing you to get out into your base without letting everything into your base should one of these gates get destroyed. Making all of your walls hollow also means that there are effectively two walls because the first wall could get destroyed and then that opens up that, the inside of the wall and then the second layer of the wall needs to get destroyed for the monsters to then be able to get through. Usually walls are a lot easier to build when they're on a flat area. As you can see here, you have a nice hallway that allows easy, convenient access to where the monsters are, especially during raids, and then you can just run back in. And should something happen to you tragic, it doesn't go all the way into your base. There's multiple layers of defense. The main thing to keep in mind when building these kind of defensive double-layered walls is to make each wall exactly two units apart. So whenever you build your first wall, then take a basic piece, such as the stone 2x1 wall, and place it on the ground here, and then make sure that your other wall is in the exact right place. And this gives you a wide variety of different options. As you can see here, this wall is more defensive, whereas here we have sort of a partial wall and the staircase. And then you can also add ramparts. You can use an alternating pattern where you place one layer and then you end every other piece and you get rid of them. And this gives it this really cool rampart look. And it'll also mean that the ranged enemies will shoot you, but then you can hide behind these things here. We'll be able to see what I mean with these skeletons. See how they're shooting me? And I can just hide right here and avoid their arrows while being able to shoot them, right? The stone arch is a great piece that has a wide variety of different uses. You can clip them into each other, like you see here, to make a nice little arch pattern. You can also use the stone arches without clipping them to make a sort of bigger doorway. Or you can use stone arches to bring stone pieces out Stone has to be on top of stone, or the ground in most cases. So you can use these arches to make little stone ledges that you normally wouldn't be able to make. Another cool build piece are these stone floors. However, placing them requires a lot of stone, so you might consider just using the hoe and making paved roads. I find that they actually look really cool. It has a really grand stone floor look. Stone floor pieces are a bit unique because they sort of set themselves into the ground more easily. The stone floor, it goes halfway into the ground, so it's unique in that way. It may take a lot of stone, but making a floor of stone does look really cool, as you can see, especially when you build it with iron. You can also use them as an effective roof because the pieces lock together pretty well. So as long as you have all the gaps full, then you can make a roof that doesn't have any support in the middle, as you can see here. Another cool thing to try is to use an alternating floor pattern. This takes more effort, but it doesn't take more resources. It's just like the alternating brick pattern. You're gonna place one layer of floor here. Let's get rid of this one. 
And once you've placed your first layer of floor, then you're going to fill the edge piece with one of these. And now we're going to place the next row of floor pieces, right? But you can see that it's going to be alternating. And this gives it a cool, unique look. Just like the wool, it's actually a lot easier if we make the whole pattern on the edge here, because then we can just fill everything up pretty quickly, right? So now that we have those, now that we have these pieces placed, we can just go down the line and place the pattern. I don't know about you, but I find it really satisfying to place pieces in a pattern. It just feels nice, like it calms me down, makes my life feel easier. That's the gist of it. And you can see here that this makes a sort of unique crisscross pattern. It looks really cool. Another cool thing to try out is to incorporate circles into your design with stone. When working with stone and circles, it's really important that you make the basic shape first before you make the rest of your building. And the easiest way to make the circle is to use a piece and then rotate it once or twice, okay? So see, this is rotating it twice. You use the piece, rotate it twice, place it again. Use the piece, rotate it twice, place it again. So this is how you use circles. You first place the base circle, and then you can follow a pattern to fill it up. Like we have all these gaps, right? So we can clip from the left side like that, but then it looks all weird, right? So working with circles is more tedious. You have to sort of know where to place things to cover all of the gaps. And once you cover the gaps up, then you create a whole bunch of other snap points. So it gets quite confusing. You can see here, imagine I'm trying to make the next layer of the wall. How do I remember where exactly my circle is? I have to kind of mess around and then I make some mistakes and it doesn't work out. This is why you need to make your circles sort of fully. So before you cover up the gaps and introduce all these new snap points, you would make the full wall and the circular structure, the basis of it, just like, let's say I was gonna do it three units high, then it would be like this. And then, now that I've made the circular structure, the frame, then I can trim and add to it and add all those snap points, and I'm not gonna screw up the rest of the building. You can also make circular structures out of the basic stone pieces, just like this. And the same rule applies. Place a stone piece and then rotate it once or twice. We're gonna rotate it once and then place the next stone piece, rotate it again, and just keep doing this, rotating it once every single time. Sometimes the terrain will change, so you can just sort of dip down just like that and keep the pattern going. And the end result will be a very circular looking thing. Making circles is more advanced, but it's not that crazy, as long as you remember to make the whole circular frame first before you add the trim. That makes it a lot easier. Don't try and keep track of where the doorway is gonna be and all that kind of thing. Just make the whole wall and then eliminate the pieces to make the doorway. That makes it much easier. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. There's more Valheim videos coming out every Wednesday, every Friday, and every Sunday. I've got loads of video ideas, thanks to all of you as well commenting below. Always feel free to comment and let me know what you want a Valheim video about. I love making new tutorials. And if you want to support my work and also have a great Valheim experience, then consider checking out my tutorial all about purchasing your own dedicated Valheim server from Zap. Playing Valheim on a dedicated server is a whole new experience that really makes the world feel more alive, especially if you're lucky enough to have some friends who like Valheim as much as you do and they like building things. There's nothing like having a world and logging into it and seeing that somebody else built something. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!